Johnny here with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to introduce exponential functions, um, what they are, and then get to some graphs. So we're going to be graphing some exponential functions. So to start off, an exponential function is you've got some base and it's being raised to an x power, that x being the variable. So that's why we call it an exponential equation or function is because our unknown, our variable, is in the exponent position, exponential function. Our base, uh, it's a little, bit, little specific here, the base has to be a positive number and not one. So we're talking numbers bigger than zero, like a half, uh, two thirds, not one, and then all the positive numbers past one. And Let's just go straight into it. I've got this function here, f of x, and it is the base 2 being raised to the x power. It's in the exponent position. We call this an exponential equation. In this case, with this function notation, it must be an exponential function. So if I want to know what this thing looks like, I can kind of zoom in near the origin choose some values to plug in and just kind of plug and chug and let's maybe see if I can get a shape of this thing. So I'm gonna make a little x, y table to start off. And I'm choosing values near the origin. So I'll choose negative two up to two, those nice pretty integers. And then y is just whatever the function spits out. So the very first number would be 2 being raised to the negative second power. Well, negative exponents just reciprocate my base. So this is 1 over 2 to the second power, which is 1 fourth. Or 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. Oh yeah, 2 to the negative first, that's just positive 1 half. 2 to the 0 power, any base raised to the 0 power, that's not 0, is going to be 1. This is the identity, 2 to the first is 2, and then 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. So these values here, these are coordinates on a Cartesian plane. So I'm going to very quickly just sketch these out. X's, I'm going from negative 2 to 2. Y values, before I draw my axes, my Y values look to be all positive, so I don't need to uh, show any values below the X axis. So maybe I'll do my axes like this. My x and my y. Try to be as neat as I can. Looks like my y values need to go up to at least four for these points. And if I plug in negative two, the function will spit out a quarter, one-fourth. So if this first tick mark is one, the quarter is about right there. Negative one, this function will map it to a half. Zero is going to be one. That seems to be our y-intercept at zero, one. One maps to two. And two jumps up to four. And I, th I think I see this shape here. This is what we call exponential growth, where we start off kind of slow and steady, and then we reach this tipping point, and then it just explodes, it grows real fast. And I could think of a few good numbers. Three would jump up to eight, two to the third power is eight, two to the fourth power is 16. So that's jumping up real, real fast. We call this exponential growth. Keyword on the growth. We see this a lot in population growth, um, like, like a virus or bacteria, money in a bank. It kind of grows faster and faster. Now, some things to notice. We've just come off talking about previous uh, types of functions and their behavior. So something I would like to notice is the end behavior. 
This is increasing to the right. Rises right. Now on the left, something peculiar happens. As my x values start to go down, neg 1, neg 2, neg 3, neg 4, the function itself is spitting out smaller and smaller y values. So uh, as x goes out to like negative infinity, the function itself is getting smaller and smaller. It's getting closer and closer to zero. In fact, I think that's horizontal asymptotic behavior. So I'm going to say as x approaches through the right hand side first, infinity, f of x uh, goes to infinity, yeah. But on the left side, as x approaches negative infinity, the function is approaching zero. Now this is horizontal asymptotic behavior. So I want to say f of x has a horizontal asymptote at, and then I'm going to put the equation of that line, so that's the horizontal line, y equals zero. If I wanted to show that on my graph, I would probably use a dashed line on top of the x-axis. Using a different color helps because it's right on top of another line. But that red dashed line is what the function is approaching on the left. All right. Uh, do have a function. So some, uh, something like noticing the y-intercept is helpful. I have a y-intercept at 0, 1. Do I have an x-intercept? Will this function ever touch the x-axis? No. It's going to try, but it's never going to do it. Um, we have a domain, of course. The domain of this function seems to be good. I stretch all the way to the left and right with no hiccups, no, no vertical asymptotes, no holes or points of discontinuity. So I'm going to say that the, the, say that the domain is all real numbers, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. Range, different story. The range includes no negatives, so I start off at zero and rise to infinity in interval notation. If you were to use set notation, I might say something like the set of all y values such that y is bigger than zero, where y is, of course, real numbers. All right, so this is 2 to the x, exponential growth. All right, let's see what happens when I take my base and I change it up a little bit. Let's do 1 half being raised to the x power. All right, well, I'm going to treat this like a new graph I've never seen before. So again, I'm going to just try to get this shape, the idea of this. So I'm gonna plug and chug some numbers. Again, I'm gonna choose values close to the origin, negative two to positive two. And I know my exponent rules, or my exponent properties. If I take one half and raise it to the negative second power, I take the base and reciprocate it to two, raising it to now a positive second power. So this becomes a lovely four. Looks like one half to the negative first is just two. Any non-zero number raised to the zero power is one. There's my y-intercept again. One half to the first power, that's just an identity, one half. And 1 half squared is 1 half times itself. You multiply fractions straight across, 1 quarter. 
These values look very similar. I'm going to sketch them down real quick. Again, I have no negative y values, so I can put my x-axis kind of low. But I do have negative numbers and positive numbers on the x-axis, so I want to show left and right of the y-axis. Plugging in these numbers, negative 2 will map to 4, negative 1 jumps up to 2, 0, 1 is my y-intercept, 1 a half, and 2 a quarter. I get that same shape. This time though, as I move to the right, I am decreasing. My function is going down from left to right. It's still exponential, it's still that same shape. Instead of growth, we might call this decay. So you can think of like half-life of radiation or um, a dead body. Very quickly it would lose the liquid and organs, but the skin and bones would take longer to decompose. So exponential decay. All right, this looks so familiar to the previous one. Let's talk about, uh, oh yeah, I have a horizontal asymptote again at y equals zero. Maybe I'll graph that real quick. Lee. And I've got, as, I, as x approaches negative infinity, the function is going to positive infinity. So I'm rising on the left. I'm falling on the right, but I'm never going to hit 0 or go into the negative region. Domain, these exponentials seem to have no problems, all real numbers. The range on this one is similar. It's going from 0 to infinity. I have a y-intercept at 0, 1. In fact, this is so similar to the previous one, I think it's some sort of just a transformation. If I were to take these values and reflect them over the y-axis, I would have that graph right there. It's just a reflection over the y-axis. So I claim, if I can look back at my old transformation rules. Let's see, in order to reflect about the y-axis, I would need to put a negative inside, so in this case, inside that exponent position. So I claim exponent, or transformation rules. If I wanted to graph 2 to the negative x power, I would simply take my 2 to the x graph and reflect it about the y-axis. Well, this is not quite the same as 1 half x, but let me play around with some uh, exponent rules or properties. If you have a base being raised to a negative power, will you simply get rid of the negative power by saying reciprocate your base? And that's now being raised to a positive exponent. Oh, yeah, that's what we just graphed. So 1 half x can be rewritten as 2 to the negative x. 2 to the negative x, we know that graph because it's 2 to the x reflected about the y-axis. So these transformation rules that you used for previous graphs, they still apply. fact. Let's just go jump into that. I claim transformation rules and then the order still apply. So we've been talking about today uh, like 2 to the x, nice simple base, and a, b, c, d, these represent all of the um, different transformation rules that we've discussed in previous lectures and videos. 
So A, remember, is a coefficient on the outside, so that's going to be affecting the y values. If A were negative, it's a reflection about the x-axis, and if it's a number like a third or three, you simply multiply the y values by that number. B is a coefficient on the inside, so that's going to be changing the dilation of the horizontal uh, axis. So it's either stretching horizontally or shrinking. And if B is negative, then that's a reflection about the y-axis that we just discussed. C is a horizontal shift where every point is shifted the same amount. And D is a vertical shift where every point is shifted the same amount. So I don't want to graph all these, but let's just quickly talk about how I would transform them. So all of these bases are 2. All of the exponents are x, and I've got different um, transformations. Let's just see how I would handle it. So the very first one, 2 to the x minus 1. Notice the minus 1 is not with the exponent. It's not inside that exponent position. It's a minus 1 on the outside. So that's simply the d, or a vertical shift down one unit. The next example, negative 2 to the x. Now the base is 2, not negative 2. This is a negative 2 to the x power. So I would graph 2 to the x, and then a minus sign on the outside is a reflection about the x-axis. It's, like it's, still, it's still dealing with those y values or verticalness. So it's a reflection up and down. So this is a reflection about the x-axis. Similarly here, the 3 is on the outside, so this is going to be affecting the verticalness. And this is simply multiply the y values by 3. Scale every number by 3. We would call that a vertical dilation or stretch. Just dilating it, stretching it out. The next example, 2 to the x minus 1. Now that minus 1 is inside the exponent position, so that's going to be a horizontal shift left and right. The negative Remember the inside, it's always kind of like lying to you, or it does what, like, almost the opposite of what you want it to. So this is actually going to move in a positive direction one, or right one. This is a horizontal translation. I'll call it a shift. And I'm going right one unit. So my C value is 1 there. Next example, we've already graphed this. This is 2 to the negative x. That's simply a reflection about y-axis. And we've seen what that does. That changes my exponential growth to exponential decay. This is just another vertical dilation. But instead of multiplying by 3, stretching it out vertically, this will be vertically shrinking it. So this is still a, a vertical shrink or vertical dilation. And the way I would handle it is I would multiply the y values by a third. Looks like I've conveniently left off the Bs. Um, but yeah, it's the same idea. If B were 5, I would multiply the X values by a fifth. If B were a fifth, I would multiply the X values by a five. It's that inside kind of does the opposite of what you want it to do. And the order still matters. If, I, if you have an uh, exponential function you're trying to graph with all six of these transformation rules shown, you just follow the order B, C, A, D. That is, you take care of any sort of horizontal stretch or shrink. 
any sort of reflection about the y-axis first. Then you apply the horizontal translations left and right. Then you'll take care of any reflections about the x-axis and any vertical dilations. And lastly, you'll go up and down with vertical translations. All right. Um, I'd like to graph some. Before I do, let's talk about why the base has to be positive one. So back to this like, definition where an exponential function is a positive number being raised to the x variable other than one. If I were to try and graph this, if x is a negative number, one to like the negative one, I would reciprocate and still get one. One to the zero is one. One to a positive number is one. This is simply a line, y equals one. So this is not an exponential function, that's just a linear function. One to the x is always one, so there's nothing special about that, it's just a line. Now if my base were negative, all of a sudden crazy stuff happens. Because I can't take like uh, square roots of. So if I tried to take negative two and raise it to a one-half power, that's the square root of negative two, that's imaginary. So I can't even graph that. Um, so yeah, that's funky looking. You can get some points out of this, and it probably has a cool shape to it, but it's not a nice continuous function. It's not going to have that exponential shape to it. All of these transformations, if you reflect it, if you shift it, even if you stretch it, it's still going to have that exponential shape to it. Let's grab some. Let's do... How about negative 2x plus 4. So I have a function, p of x, and it is defined as negative 2 to the x plus 4. Now don't get caught on thinking the base is negative 2. If I wanted my base to be negative 2, I'd have to put parentheses around the negative 2. This is a negative 2 to the x power plus 4. So I see that 2 to the x. I'm almost going to treat 2 to the x as like a, a parent function. When we first introduced these transformation rules, we applied them to these parent functions. Well, I'm treating this as my parent function. I'll graph this a few times, and I'll know this shape, and I'll know these points uh, very quickly. So I'm just going to apply transformation rules to that parent graph. So I'm going to take care of this first. I don't have a C, I don't have a B. A is my next uh, transformation, or the first transformation I need to take care of in this case. So this is a negative on the outside. This is a reflection about the x-axis. After I've taken care of the A, I can take care of the D. This is simply moving every point up four. All right, so I think I'm gonna start off with that parent function. I know what that looks like now. Just drawing a Cartesian plane of 2 to the x. I'll do it like in a dashed line as like my parent function, and then I'm going to apply the transformations to see where it ends up. I remember negative 2 mapped to a quarter, negative 1 was a half, 
0 is the y-intercept, 2 to the first power is 2, 2 squared is 4. So I can kind of see my parent exponential graph. Now, I'm going to apply a transformation. I'll just do one at a time. I think I'll take care of this reflection. So I'm going to graph negative 2 to the x power. And that's simply going to reflect those five points that I've got listed about the x-axis. So the positive quarter becomes a negative quarter. My y-intercept becomes a negative 1. Two was mapping to four, so now two will be ma nap, uh, mapping to negative four. What I have in pink is not the final product, it's just the first step. I took care of my A transformation first. So that is negative two to the X. These are dashed lines and this is a negative. Lastly, I will do the up four, the vertical shift. That's where I take every point on the graph, and I'm just going to I'm just going to shift them up four units. So negative four going up four, one, two, three, four, is now an x-intercept. Interesting. Negative two up four becomes positive two. That point was there to begin with, and it ended up back there. The y-intercept of negative 1 on my pink graph becomes a y-intercept of 3. The fractions may be a little bit confusing, but I'm just going up 4 units, so the halfway mark. Up 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's halfway between 3 and 4. 3.5. Now the negative quarter, do the same thing, I move up four units, so it becomes three-fourths, seven-fourths, um, losing track, I can't do fractions, but it's going to be right there. So if that's 16-fourths, this must be 15-fourths. I think I'm going to be interested in that final point. You can label points several ways. Um, you can make an XY chart. You could, if your axes are labeled nicely, like I can read this point is 2, 0, this point is 1, 2, this point is 0, 3. This point, I need to label it in some way. I can come in here and label this. I think I'm just going to come over here and label it off to the side. This is negative 1, and I could call it 3.5. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to call it seven halves. So I just count it by halves. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven halves. Now the next point, this is going to be negative two comma 15 fourths. We're just adding four. So if you need to show some arithmetic, that's okay. This is negative one fourth and you're adding four. Get a common denominator, that's 16 fourths plus a negative 1 fourth is 15 fourths. All right, I'll just go ahead and label all these. This is 0, 3. That's an interesting point because it's my y intercept. 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 1, I'm sorry, 2, 0. 2, 0 is an interesting point because it's my x intercept. So I'm just going to label that just to make sure everyone's on board. And my horizontal asymptote has been moved. It started off at y equals 0. I reflected my horizontal asymptote remained at y equals 0. I was just coming at 0 from below. And then I moved everything, including the asymptote, up 4. So I now have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. So as I graph my function, 
up and to the left, I'm going to be approaching four, but I'll never quite reach it. As I go to the right, this thing is going to plummet down real fast. So again, these transformations, they may reflect and stretch, but the basic shape will remain the same. I still have that horizontal asymptote and this increasing behavior on the other side. That basic shape. Uh, very quickly, domain. All real numbers. I think it's now safe to say all these exponential functions will have an unrestricted domain. I can plug in negative numbers, I can plug in zeros, and I can plug in positive numbers. I can plug in fractions. Doesn't matter. All real numbers. Range, my final range. Uh, well, it looks like I'm going to start down at negative infinity. And then I go up, 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 up to 4. I just don't include it. So I use a parenthesis. All right. So practice graphing these exponential functions where if you know the parent, then you can just apply these transformations. I should end with a different base. I've just used two this entire time because one half was just another version of two. So I'm gonna do one more graph and this is like the exponential function. In nature, when things start to um, grow <laughs> exponentially, they grow with this understood E, the Euler's number, about 2.7. So let's, let's graph that. And you put money in a bank and you compound the interest like not daily but like what's that word continuously it uh, grows at a this e uh, factor factor of e not a factor of e but it grows with this e under understood yeah nature herself she grows with e all right so e is just a number. Don't be confused. It's a positive number. It's like pi. It's close to 3, but it's shy of 3. It's 2.71828, blah, blah, blah. It's an irrational number. It cannot be expressed as a nice fraction. Um, and if I want to graph this thing, I think I'll just treat it like a new parent where I'll plug in values close to the origin. So it's my first time graphing e to the x. I think I'll plug in negative 2 up to 2. Okay. E being raised to the negative second power. Well, that is simply 1 over E being raised to the second power. That's the exact value. If you wanted a decimal uh, approximation, I believe e squared is about 7.4. Could be off. But it's 1 point, or 7.4 ish. e to the negative first, well, that's 1 over e, which I'm going to grossly approximate to 1 over 2.7, really grossly approximating to about a third. Any non zero number raised to the zero power becomes 1. e to the first is e, which is about 2.7, and e squared is about 7.4-ish. I'm just going to plot these points down real quick. No negative y values. Draw my axes, label. Looks like I do need to show maybe up to seven. Uh, 
No, just plug and tug. Negative two gave me about a seventh. So it's really tiny, really, really tiny. Negative one was a third, maybe, tiny. Zero was the y-intercept, one. One maps to E, which is about 2.7. E squared is about 7.4. I'll go ahead and label that on my y-axis as E squared. It's kind of hard to zoom in here, but this is 1 over E, and that would be 1 over E squared. And I now know what this graph looks like. It looks like every other exponential growth function. It is a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. It rises to the right. Uh, it has a y-intercept of one. I could apply all the transformation rules to this. Some things to notice before I let you go is um, that magic sweet spot from making it go from exponential growth and exponential decay. That sweet spot is the uh, base of one. Any number bigger than one, so E is about 2.7, two is bigger than one. These bases are bigger than one, so they show growth. Any value less than one, so five sixths, seven elevenths, one half, values less than one will show decay. One more thing I wanted to notice is a rational exponent is okay. It's just hard to graph. But let's say I was trying to be uh, more precise and I wanted some more points on here. And for some reason, I was going to plug in an x value that was not an integer, something like a half. So I'm going back to my very original 2 to the x graph. And I'm plugging in an x value of a half. Like I'm just zooming in on what's going on right there. Well, I take 2 and raise it to the 1 half power. And that's just a rational exponent. So let's say square root. Square root. Oh, so that's just a square root of 2. Which is an irrational number, but it's about 1.4-ish. So on my graph, I should have a point at 1 half comma... 1.4-ish. To graph these, you probably won't have to worry about this, but I just wanted to show that, that was, that's there. Don't be scared of fraction exponents. All right. Go practice graphing exponential functions. Start off with a parent, and then see if you can do some transformations. Good luck.